Welcome to Real Kiwi Fishing. This week, I'm down the local on a solo. What we've got today is a pretty perfect day. A little bit bright, but we've got a late evening high tide. It's around that 8.30. Got a swell that's still sort of finishing off. We've had it sort of rolling on and off for the past two weeks. So it should be nice and stirred up. Got the wind behind me. This is pretty much perfect. I'm not too sure if the fish are gonna be here. But hey, you don't know unless you've got a bait in the water. Just um, got a new rod to have a bit of a flick with. It's the five piece, Okuma five piece rod. It's a travel rod. Pretty easy to um, just have it in your backpack basically and walk into your spot. 13 foot, so you've got a bit of length. Pretty um, thin blank, which most of the um, Okuma sort of rods are going to. So I thought I'd come down and give that a flick anyway. Hopefully get a fish on it. And I'm running the Coronado 60 on that. Also got here the Soul Surf, but it's the uh, rock rod, 10 foot, three piece. Another great rod just to have in your backpack. Easy to um, cart around with you, put it together. 10 feet's pretty nice length for uh, fishing off the rocks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, run a little dropper on this one and I've got the um, Mutsu suicide hook and that's one of those hooks that basically just cuts back on itself pretty harsh so I thought what I'll do is I'll just um, basically fish with the 13 foot got a stray line rig there and then I'll chuck this out run a little bit of a heavy drag so hopefully the fish hooks up themselves so yeah down the uh, local today Hopefully get onto a few fish on these uh, rods here. Give them a bit of a test out. Haven't fished with them before. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So I'm just running the usual stray line rig. But I'm actually going to start with a one ounce. It's a little bit rocky out in front of me. But um, it's that sort of low sort of fowl and a little bit of seaweed and stuff so just to get a little bit of distance thought I'd start with a one ounce and then I can just cut back on it if I get sort of snagged up haven't been down the local for a while so just not too sure if there's any fish about but like I was saying don't know until you got a bait in the water and I just couldn't resist those perfect conditions. So being 13 foot, it's perfect for along the bays, east coast. It's nice and light, it's just super thin. Got a good flick on it, probably about sort of Maybe 70 meters, 60, 70 meters. And the Coronado's got that bait feeder system, which is good. If you're sort of running two rods. Now, because it's still light, Normally get a lot of little fish, but hey, you just never know, especially with that little bit of stir up. A couple of little taps already. Getting lots of little bites. As soon as it hits the water, pretty much. Getting some good distance on this. Must be a good sort of 70 meters. It's with a little two ounce reef sinker. It bites pretty much straight away. Be nice to have some harder baits, like some slabs of carwai or something. It's 
by the time something big gets there, bait's pretty much gone. Oh, there's a little bit better grab. Can't actually strike with this because I've got that that mutsu. That wasn't a big little grab there. It is getting to that prime time. It's getting a little bit later. Sun's going down, bigger fish hopefully moving in. some good distance all right that little dropper rig's actually working quite well it's a little bit heavier weight so I'm getting a little bit further out but also because the fish are biting towards me I'm able to keep a little bit tighter line with that dropper rig So what I might end up doing is swapping out that Mutsu suicide hook to a J hook so I can actually strike on the fish. Actually got a little bit of a side breeze as well I'm having to deal with okay guys I'm getting a lot more bites on this dropper little dropper rig so I've put my other line away and what I've done is I've swapped out that mutsu for a J only because now I'm going to be fishing it basically in my hand so I'm going to be striking on the fish. Just constantly biting towards me. what I was saying now that I'm fishing it in my hand can strike on the fish that little dropper's working a treat it's only a little fella but it's prime time we might might be lucky and pick up a couple of goodies for the bin to take home for uh, tomorrow's dinner Yep, just a little fella. We on, we on. Just another little fella. Oh, gone. Could have been takeable. A little bit better than that uh, last one. But this is the um, best time of day right now. So I'll probably um, end up getting a couple of good hits. But yeah, it was a little bit of a bit better fish. Try again. Beautiful evening. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. 
Just another little fella. That little dropper rig's been working a treat. About the same size as that other one. That was a nice hit. Bang, gone. Okay guys, I'm back down the local. Had a little bit of a hard time the other night. It was really quiet, had a couple of small snaps. Caught one sort of probably takeable around that 33, 34. But having just the one, I decided to let it go. That was when it got dark, it was too hard to, to record like it normally does sometimes down there. So yeah, I'm back out on the, down the local. I've changed my area. Still got the two rods. I've got the Soul Surf rock rod and I've got that five piece travel. So I'm gonna start with just the one rod. Got a bit of a cross shore wind. So it's a little bit hard to fish with the two, trying to keep it out of the snags. But uh, hopefully we get into a few fish this time around on the rods. Hope you guys enjoy. So with that crosswind, gonna have a big bow in that line. You just sort of gotta persevere with it. You can slowly wind it up, get that tension. But you don't want it to sort of move around too much. You'll just get snagged up all the time. So got a cross shore coming this way, sort of casting into the wind rather than straight out. If I cast straight out, it's just gonna carry on down here Got a nice little ledge here and some sort of quite rocky over this side. Not a bad tide today. I'm actually fishing the low tide this time. Got a low around that half five. Still not quite perfect. You want that sort of low tide maybe an hour before dark. But got a lot more sort of rocky area here. A lot more kelp. So I'm basically just fishing that stray line sort of rig. If I use that little arm um, dropper, it'll probably get snagged up. Got a little bit of sun about today. Still a bit cloudy, which is good. And we still got that swell, that leftover swell that was rolling the other night. Which is good as well. So now that it's more settled, I can just slowly wind that bow in. So I've got a little bit more tension.
bait's gone. So when you're winding in, just give it a good yank. Get that um, hook up off the bottom. Skip it across the surface. You don't get snagged up. Bait up again. Okay guys, I found a uh, little pilly in the bait bag. Decided to use them whole. So basically, I'm starting at the tail and just threading through maybe two times through and then out through the gill plate there. Start at the tail, end that side because it's a little bit more aerodynamic. So we'll give him a flick out. So big bow in that line again. It's basically gone out that way, my bait's up there. And I'll just slowly wind that slack up. Not too fast. Because you don't want to drag your bait through that foul. Lots of little stuff. as you do get through the day. That's why that um, lining up that tide with the evening, early morning really helps. We might pick up a couple, if we're lucky, plenty of bites. That tide's turned guys, I'm hooked up, just a little fella, a little bit better than what I've been getting. The bites are actually starting to get a little bit better. There you go guys, at last. A takeable fish, he's probably about 36, 37. It's taken a while, but that tide's probably turned. And uh, I'll put my, end up getting a couple of these fellas for uh, tomorrow's breakfast or dinner. But yeah, he's about 36, I would say. So he's going in the bin at last. Whew. Getting lots of bites towards me. Oh, that was a real nice grab. But yeah, getting lots of bites towards me. I've actually dropped down in my sinker size. I've dropped down to about a maybe a quarter ounce. Just a little quarter ounce. And what I'm actually doing, it's a little quarter ounce, seven bar o. What I'm actually doing is just winding slowly as they're biting, they're biting towards me. And then just wait for that grab, which just happened then, that was quite a nice grab. Hooked up, hooked up again. Looks like a car why, which isn't too bad. Kawai and a snapper isn't too bad. There you go. How's that? Kawai and a snapper for the bin. Yeah, boy. Might have to try and come back when that tide aligns with the late evening. Probably about two hours out. 
for it being perfect. Plenty of fish here, but a lot of little stuff. But you just never know, we might pick up a couple more. It's good territory around here. Lots of kinna, lots of kārahos, which is cat's eye. I've caught plenty of snapple with heaps of cat's eye in the guts. But yeah, plenty of um, kinna, and that's on here where I'm standing, so you know it's going to be a lot more out there than what's on here. Might even be a few mussels and stuff. But we'll keep at it, keep at it. Okay guys, I'm going to use a little bit of that kawai that I caught because there's a lot of little fish and I've had some real nice grabs I know there is some decent fish there and the good thing about the kawai is I'm going to be able to let those little fish just peck at it and those bigger fish will get excited, come in and just grab it so I've kept the slab for uh, my breakfast with the uh, snapper that I got and I thought I'd try the other half on some bait it's a good way to pick up something better there'll be a heap of little, little snapper pecking at it those bigger snapper will just sort of sit off the back and hopefully they'll get excited, come in and bump for Oh that's a little bit better pick up Oh yep, yep, come on Oh, that was a nice grab. Ooh. I'm just going to leave it there. I know I've got that car wire on. So I know there will still be some a um, little bit left there. Yep, we're on, we're on. Just another little fella. With that kawai, when you use those harder baits, just like in the boat, we like using them in the boat when those better fish are there, or when those smaller fish are there as well. And it allows that bait to stay on there longer. There you go. That's the little fella, which we'll put back. But the old kawai, working a treat. Now what I'll do is I'll just add to this plenty of meat still on there, I could probably cast that out and get bites but it's not going to go very far so I'll grab another piece, add to it and uh, hopefully something bigger grabs it this time there you go, just added to it nice big chunky bit of kawai Basically, as soon as it hits the water, I'm just putting that bail, bail arm over to stop that bow. If you let out too much line, it's just going to bow right down there and you won't even have contact with your bait. So I'm just slowly winding. The fish is basically biting towards me most of the time. I'm just slowly winding 
I've got that bow, I can see that bow, and I can see the bites, the bow starts twitching. It can be quite difficult when you've got, got a sidewind, you really want it behind you. <laughs> a little bit better, not sure if takeable, hopefully he'll join that other one in the chili. Definitely a keepy. he's the same size, about 36, 37, so we'll chuck him in with the other one. Got to feed at last, down the local. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we on, we on! I think this one's a kawai. Which isn't too bad if we can get them in. They're quite good size kawai. Gives me another one. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I know it's just a kawai, but we've got a feed. Got a couple of good sized kawai. And a snapper, well two snapper, and two kawai in the bin. That's not bad. How's that? Two kawai, two snapper, two right. Locals doing the damage. <laughs> 